Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be working on this vintage Canadian National Tyco Century 430 locomotive. This was a locomotive which I picked up at Larkspur Line train store for seven Canadian dollars. And I suspect the reason it was going so cheap probably had something to do with uh, the condition. As you can quite clearly see, this engine is not in great shape. It's missing a lot of parts. It actually looks like part of the cab has melted, possibly due to an overheating headlight. Almost all the truck covers are gone, and uh, there seems to be some hockey tape wrapped around it. I don't really know what that's all about. And in terms of running, it does actually run to an extent, but it certainly doesn't run well. And uh, last time I was running this thing, it was arcing really badly. There were actually some pretty bright sparks coming from the cab, so I don't really know what the story with that is, but we're gonna try to find out today. So anyways, for any of you that haven't seen this locomotive's test run, we're gonna take it over the track. I'll show you all what it's doing, and then we'll go from there. So as mentioned, this thing was doing some pretty unusual stuff last time I was trying to run it, so I'm gonna be curious to see if any of that is still going on. Anyway, let's give it some power. And you can see it actually is running, but my sound's just horrible. I don't see any arcing, but, well, that's actually smoke coming out the windows. Yikes. All right, so, uh, yeah, clearly there's some stuff uh, not quite right here. So let's bring it over to the workbench and see if we can correct that. So as you can see, this locomotive's drive is clearly not in good mechanical condition. Uh, I didn't see any of the arcing that was happening the previous time, but uh, you know, smoke coming out the windows is not a great sign. I'm not sure if that relates to the arcing problem or just something going on with the motor, but either way, something clearly needs to get repaired. So we're just gonna open this all up and uh, you can see right there, there's actually a broken wire and uh, the light fixture is completely loose, so that's no good. But what I really want to have a look at is the motor itself. So I guess we'll lift this off. You uh, kind of squeeze these in to remove them, by the way, in case you haven't done this bit yourself. Anyway, I guess we'll just remove these two screws here and then we'll actually get down to the motor. Everything else has to be taken apart so it can be cleaned and lubricated, but this is usually the bit you want to check out. Okay then, that is not a great looking commutator. Look at all the carbon on that. So I'm hoping that that smoke we saw was coming from uh, this part right here, which is the commutator. Uh, sometimes when these little gaps right here fill up with carbon, uh, they can create a short circuit and that can start to actually burn the material uh, in the commutator. But there's also always a chance that it is in fact the armature itself. So we're gonna quickly inspect that just by getting something under here, pulling this gear off and then popping uh, this part out. And unfortunately, the comic or the armature, I should say, is not in great shape. Um, you can see there's a lot of burning on the coils, so it's very possible that the smoke was coming from there as well. This is definitely um, a motor which is overheated at some point. But it was running, so I think we're just going to clean it up, and hopefully this motor will still work. Let's try to remove a lot of the carbon buildup on here. I suspect the reason there's so much carbon buildup is probably because I think this engine did a lot of miles. I think somebody really just uh, ran the bejesus out of it. Now I'm gonna quickly just uh, try to clean up some of the carbon buildup on all these plastic parts here. It would be good too to clean the brushes up. You can really just see by uh, how thin the brushes are that this thing really was run a lot. You know. It's uh, it's kind of unfortunate seeing an engine in such rough shape, but at least you know somebody really got a lot of use out of it. You know, if this engine could tell stories, I'm sure it would have a few. Anyway, let's uh, try to get this motor all back together. It looks like the magnets have come loose. That's interesting. Well, I guess we'll just put that back in there and uh, hopefully we'll all be well. Well, I'm not sure if uh, that actually worked, but we're gonna get some power leads here and test it out. Well, apparently so. Sounds okay. 
definitely low on power, but again, looking at those coils, I'm frankly amazed the motor can run whatsoever. So I guess we'll throw some screws back on there, and then we'll uh, service the rest of the drive, because I'm sure it needs uh, some work as well. Especially if this is a high mileage locomotive, I'm sure the gears have probably got a lot of dust and things like that caught in them. That's already one sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this all definitely needs some cleaning. Looks like there's uh, still a little bit of flashing on this gear from the factory. That's no good. That all cleaned up nicely. That might have been uh, hindering performance. And I'll just uh, clean this gear up and uh, the gearbox is going to be pretty much ready to put back together. I just so happened to notice cleaning this gear that uh, these are actually marks. Um, so the other gears have curved into this one. It's not just uh, markings in the grease. So I'm definitely going to be putting some uh, grease back in this gearbox just because, you know, due to everything being high mileage, there's a lot of opportunity for there to be a lot of friction between the parts. And I suspect if I don't put some grease, it's going to cause issues. You know, in a lot of cases, I just put some oil, but I think it needs something a tad bit thicker this time. I'll throw a little oil in here too, though. So at this point, we've basically got the entire drive back together. So we're gonna be uh, reconnecting these wires, which unfortunately broke off. I think I've figured out why there was an arcing issue in the cab, and it's because if this was loose and uh, you've got um, you know negative or positive power, which is opposite to the frame here, these might have been touching each other and creating some sparks. So I'm hoping that if we reinstall this light fixture properly, it's gonna be okay, because if you look in there, I noticed the peg for the fixture is actually still intact, so it should just be a matter of popping that back into place and hopefully the shorting issue will be done with. So let's do just that. If you're wiring up one of these Tyco locomotives yourself, basically this one right here is insulated. The other one is connected to the ground which is the entire frame through this screw. So you connect this wire, which goes to the rear truck to the isolated side, and then you connect this other one, which goes to the light to the grounded side. All right, with that complete, all we have to do is service the rear truck, and uh, I think we're going to be in business. Well, it looks like the coupling box on this has been removed. I might have a spare, though. I'll have to have a look. So I was able to find a spare part, but unfortunately it's missing one of the pieces for the truck cover, and it's also off a later model. This is one of the Hong Kong made parts, whereas uh, this locomotive was uh, actually made in the States, so it might fit, but I don't know, it's not perfect. But I came up with some sort of an idea, which is that I don't really need a front coupler. I don't think it's very likely I'm gonna end up using that, but a rear coupler is handy. So I'm just gonna swap out these two parts because they're identical. And uh, yeah, then we'll get a coupler in the back and uh, just reuse that part.
Well, I think at this point this thing is pretty much ready to take over to the track, so let's go test it out. Right folks, moment of truth. Is this thing going to start and run or is the motor just going to burn up? I don't know. Let's find out. Hey! Seems to be a runner! Look at that! Definitely, uh, I think got some wheel slipping going on there, but uh, that is way better than I expected. Certainly uh, not the fastest, but the noise problem seems to have gone away. Huh. Yeah, there's definitely something a little off with the drive, but she's doing it. This thing is so clapped out, the fact it runs as well as it does is really nothing short of a miracle. Now, I think it's time to give this thing some uh, cosmetic upgrades. So I think the first thing I want to tackle on this locomotive is uh, fixing up some truck covers for it. Now, as you might remember in the beginning, we had one. I accidentally broke that off, so it needs to be reattached. I was able to find a second one in storage, so we've got two of them now, which is enough to cover one side. But that still obviously leaves another side exposed. So I went digging through and I was able to find some more. Unfortunately, these are not the right kind. They're meant to give the illusion of uh, another uh, axle set. So it's not great, especially for this type of locomotive. But for a $7 engine, you know, it's better than nothing. And uh, you know, you might be wondering, what well, it's gonna look a little bit weird having two different types, but something my grandfather taught me is that, you know, with a car, if you have mis mix matched hubcaps, you can uh, put two on one side and a uh, different kind on the other side. And of course, since you can't see both sides at the same time, nobody will ever know, except everybody watching this right now. So I think we're just gonna roll with that and uh, call it a day. Finally managed to get this weight back in. I really wasn't sure how to do that. I couldn't find any uh, self-tapping screws that were the right length. Uh, so I did something a little bit uh, unusual with it. I took some nails, I heated them up with uh, this little lighter here, and then I just uh, drove them right into the plastic. And uh, yeah, it seems to be holding fine. And uh, I somehow didn't actually uh, burn or melt the shell at all here. So uh, I think I'm gonna call that a success. And uh, yeah, managed to get most of the electrical tape or a hockey tape, I should say, off the frame. So with that, I think I declared this locomotive complete. Now let's set it up on the track with all of its wonderful cosmetic additions. Yeah, just look at that. It's mint. Well, folks, I think that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I am absolutely thrilled with how this thing turned out. You know, it's by no means a, like, fantastic locomotive. It's still pretty rough. But, I mean, it's so clapped out that the fact that it can actually run under its own power is, to me, nothing short of a miracle. And it doesn't even run too bad for an old power torque. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that. And uh, even just bringing up the cosmetic condition of it, I think improved it quite a bit. So uh, for a high mileage locomotive, I think it has earned itself a bit of a new lease on life. But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. And with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.